We're going to take a, well, a trip down memory lane with our favorite vice president, Kamala Harris. And, uh... <laughs> He's the Is best. that the K-Hive? I think, I think I just gave the audience a dry heave. <laughs> it's the K-Heave. <laughs> it's the K-Heave, yeah. So here we are. Let's start off with some of our favorite hits. You know, when we talk about our children, I know for this group, we all believe that when we talk about the children of the community, they are the children of the community. You know, I, I knew that everybody in the audience tonight would love this clip in the audience tonight. <laughs> she does make an excellent point you should have your speech written before you go on stage. <laughs> Here we go. Want to see another one? Quit another one? Here we go. I got another one. Here we go. We all watched the television coverage of just yesterday. That's on top of everything else that we know and don't know yet based on what we've just been able to see. And because we've seen it or not doesn't mean it hasn't happened. <laughs> but just limit it to what we have seen. What? Okay, I'm gonna play that again. That's fucking... We all watched the television coverage of just yesterday. That's on top of everything else that we know and don't know yet based on what we've just been able to see and because we've seen it or not doesn't mean it hasn't happened. What? But just limit it to what we have seen. <laughs> He sounds like the jock from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure doing his book report. Things are bigger and yet smaller. <laughs> <laughs> San Dimas High School football rules. <laughs> See, you know somewhere Dan Quayle is going fucking right. I owe Dan Quayle an apology. That's, that's right. I just spelled pe potato wrong right. and I was girl's lip syncing. It's like they spring like she goes on a trip, they're like, oh, you gotta give a speech. About what? Yeah, figure it out. <laughs> we, we, we gotta do the thing, of the thing that we continue to do. That's, that's, that's how I would talk if you locked me in a car trunk for three weeks and then let me out. <laughs> oh, here we go, we got another one, here we go. Hi, and we were all um, doing a tour of the library here and um, talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time when we think about a day in the life of our children. You know what's great? You could, she could literally make any of these speeches just mix and match them at different spots and it'd be the same effect. Because none of them make any sense. Yeah. yeah. Look how long her finger is. What was this? What was this? You know, I think her stepchildren must uh, hate her during the passage of time. <laughs> And you don't Here they're not exactly a K-Hive. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know, I think she's waiting for Joe Biden for some passage of time. <laughs> that could, heartbeat away from the presidency. Heartbeat away. And you know, she was right, Steph? She, like, last, it was two years ago, Biden went under the knife again. They didn't talk about it, but when the president goes under anesthesia, she became, she was the first president female president was her, and you know there was one person pissed off. Hillary Clinton. Yeah. yeah. Right? She was like, God damn it, Bill! Ah! ah! And then she had someone killed. Yeah. That's, how the, that's how the Clintons relieve stress. They, they put a hurt on somebody. Like Whitey Bulger? Yeah, like Whitey Bulger. You would take a nap after a murder. I Do you think every time a Biden clone shows up, she gets more pissed? She's like, fuck, another one's got to die. Right? <laughs> uh... <laughs> that is a long finger. 
It is a long, long thing. <laughs> Nicely done. I'm not. I just, it, it just looks like an ar Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so here she is when she went to Poland and uh, they are asking her a question about the Polish refugees, or refugees from Ukraine, uh, from the Ukraine war coming to Poland. And watch this, it's very funny. Is the United States willing to make a specific allocation for Ukrainian refugees? And for President Duda, I wanted to know if you think, and if you asked the United States to specifically accept more refugees. Okay. <laughs> a friend in need is a friend in need. <laughs> okay, I, I, I first. okay, so this time. That, that's, that's how you laugh at slapstick. That's not how you laugh at Ukrainian refugees. <laughs> Dude, she's, did you ever watch that show, The IT Crowd? She's like the chick from that. It was it The IT Crowd? Oh. She, what's the... Hey, Chris, did, you, did you hear that funny joke about the Ukrainian refugees? <laughs> Fuck. They want money. <laughs> so uh, here's another one. Watch this. She's really, she's really a storyteller, too. She can, she's, she's like a modern... Watch this. Which brings me to May 30th, 2020. Bob and Doug returned to the Kennedy Space Center. They suited up, they waved to their families, and they rode an elevator up nearly 20 stories. They strapped in to their seats and waited as the tanks beneath them filled with tens of thousands of gallons of fuel. And then they launched. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> It's like, a, it's like a modern day Garrison Keeler, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Jimmy, they went up nearly 20 stories. <laughs> Imagine the 20th floor of a building if you can. <laughs> nearly, so 19 stories? No, 20. I, I entered the elevator, I pressed the I counted all the buttons, <laughs> and I pressed 20. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. She talks to kid, people like she's one of those YouTube kids programs. Have you ever yes. watched those creepy fucks that do that? Yeah. And they talk, hi, how are you? They talk to you like you're stupid. That's how she talks to America. She talks to America like she's addressing a third grade class. Yeah, like it's romper room. Whether your Joe eyes Biden. are open or your eyes are closed, <laughs> if you can see it or you can't see it. <laughs> I just want to say, yes, that is act that's exactly what astronauts do. Now do vice presidents. <laughs> one small step for man, one giant brain fart for mankind. You can tell she laughs when she's trying to buy time to think of her next line, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, ha, 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 okay, where was I going with this? That's exactly what she's doing. And she's got a million mundane stories, matter of fact, just like that, just like that. A million of them. She's got a million of them. Here, here's one more, here we go. Look back, did Democrats fail past Democratic presidents, congressional leaders to not codify Roe v. Wade over the past five decades? I think that, to be very honest with you, I, I do believe that we should have rightly believed, but we certainly believe that certain issues are just settled. Certain issues are just settled. Clearly we're not. No, that's right. And that's why I do believe that we are living, sadly, in um, real unsettled times. <laughs> you can't fucking do that. You can't say that was settled, but it wasn't. Yeah, I know, we're living in unsettled times. <laughs> Did, do you think this is worse or Nikki Haley trying to answer what the Civil War was about? If you were to pick the most, the I one, wow. Well, I don't remember that. What did Nikki Haley do? She, she, somebody asked her what caused the Civil War and uh, 
she had to not say slavery, I guess, and gave a real Kamala Harris level answer. Well, you know that October 7th happened by Hamas because it was Putin's birthday. You know that, right? <laughs> you know that, right? That's what she said. A like, coincidence? Oh, these lizard people trying to act like human beings are hilarious, right? She looks so uncomfortable in her meat suit. It's just so weird. <laughs> I think this is the first time that the U.S. government and this administration is the least English proficient government on the face of the earth. That's a big statement. It's a big statement, but I have to say it's true. Yeah. And it's also kind of weird that the chick who's considered the DNC town bike because everyone's wrote her is wearing a pearl necklace. I think that's kind of weird, too. Oh, that, come on. Is that too much? Sorry. Okay, wrong show. The best wrong show. Wrong show. You know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to cut that out of the YouTube video. Okay, bye, bye. Okay, bye. You know, I, I'm feeling kind of close to this audience right now, and I, I, I have a confession to make. That uh -oh. I woke up this morning, and I had a stomach ache, and I was like, ugh, got to go get an abortion. Oh. <laughs> you know, well, I can. Yeah. Okay, who am I kidding? These eggs are dead. Come see us do a live stand-up show. We'll be in Venice, California, Palmdale, California, Omaha, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, Boston, Massachusetts, and we're going to Europe. Do you live in Europe? We're going to be there. Go to jibidor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.